Hey, we're Jenny and Rich, and our stowaway is Twitchell the Marina Cat. We've been documenting the refit of our 1977 Tayana 37 Ramble On for the past several years. I don't think there's a single part of this boat that we haven't repaired, replaced, or improved in some way. We're proud to say we've done 99.9% .9 of the work ourselves. We've gained a lot of knowledge and experience in the process, and we're happy to pass that wisdom on. All right, we're not mic'd up. So what are we working on? We're doing this again. We're cleaning the teak on the hatch. Uh, how do I want to say this? We should have zoomed out. Um, in the wintertime, the, we have a, um, a piece of foam that we put in here in the winter to keep the heat inside the boat. And we get a lot of condensation in the hatch and it stains the wood because this wood has never hasn't been finished so it's just bare teak and i cleaned it last God, was that last year i think so i cleaned it like this last year just with some teak cleaner and then we never sealed it so it's been oh that thing's right on your face jesus so uh <laughs> we never, after I cleaned it, we never sealed it. So now I'm cleaning it again, and this time we're actually going to seal it. So one thing we found is um, the hatch doesn't leak, but when the condensation builds up inside the hatch, it will puddle here in the corners, and it will drip onto our bed. So before we seal this with varnish, we're going to do, um, we're just going to put a layer of epoxy in so that if there is, is any moisture in here, it will stay on the little, uh, whatever, brackets here. It won't fall down onto the bed and leave a big puddly, it's like a puddly brown stain from the teak. So up under here is where it gets black. So gross. Yeah, so we just stapled this queen up to the, up all around the uh, hatch box and bleach it and rinse it. Catch it with a sponge. So this is the middle hatch and we bleached it last year, or Jenny did actually. And this one didn't come out too bad. Um, it pretty much overwintered without actually staining the teeth too much. A little bit of staining right there. I'm going to give it some uh, sandpaper and see how it turns out. And then again with this thing also seal it with epoxy. They probably could use a little bit of scrubbing uh, just for the dirt factor on the, on the top here and around the caulking. So the inside the teak, the teak hatches, um, we're going to put some epoxy on there and then do some varnish over top of that. And I'm in a transitional phase due to the fact that we lost all of our epoxy in the shed. So now I'm going to move towards the simpler version of the total boat two to one. Not sure how the uh, uh, UV properties are, but then we'll coat it with varnish anyway. And I think the teak. The teak will oxidize underneath epoxy because that's just what wood does underneath epoxy. Biggest thing is the moisture. Just from the time last night, cleaning it yesterday, letting it dry out in the sun all day, there was a little bit of condensation still in the corners and it gets in and it eventually turns the wood colors and it's not good. I'm gonna whip up some of this, brush it on, and then uh, go from there.
right, I guess I mixed up enough. It is starting to kick off. Um, just a couple more little uh, blobs to take care of, but that's basically it. We'll see how it goes. And you saw us bleach it and scrub it and sand it and then epoxy it. And then we went back like a week later or two weeks later to finish the varnish on it and top, you know, top coat the epoxy and never even set up the camera. So what I did was sand all the drips and sags down on the epoxy coat just to get it nice and smooth. And then uh, first I put a coat of this Lust gloss on there and it was really shiny. And then went with uh, like three or four more coats of matte finish and like it a lot more. It kind of takes the glare off that when the sun's coming through the hatch. So real easy stuff to work with. Put it on with a, a foam brush. Uh, used, I think it was Mineral Spirits. Uh, just thin slightly, maybe 10%, 10 to 15% just to uh, get it to flow nice and smoothly. Uh, because the wood was all the wood grain is already sealed off with the epoxy. So it's coat after coat after coat You can put that stuff on almost immediately following the uh, Once it's dry to the touch, you don't even have to sand it. I've used epiphanis before on the insides of the boat and That's like a procedure trying to match the old 45 year old teak on the interior, but uh, um, This stuff's really easy to work with. I mean, it's not identical to the match but or to the existing but just for around the hatches, just to put a sealer on there so it doesn't get all moldy in the grain. Yeah, needed to be done. So anyway, we forgot to talk about it. And we're going to be doing our exterior teak. We have a lot of teak because our boat is pretty old and we do not use varnish. Um, we use this stuff called Starbright Teak Sealer and that'll be tomorrow. Today we're just cleaning the teak so I can't remember the last time we put a coat of it on. It was like last spring. Yeah it was maybe last spring. We usually do it twice a year but we just didn't get to it last fall so it actually has to be cleaned a little bit more than it would if we had done it. Uh, it got kind of grimy this winter. Um, so anyway, what we're going to be using is this teak cleaner. This is step one, teak cleaner. And it's just a liquid light acid. Um, we just, you put it on, you do a little scrub, it gets the dirt off. And then we also have this one, which is teak cleaner restorer. And this one is good for the vertical sides because it's a gel, so it doesn't run as much. And then we also have a teak brightener that we like to use uh, to kind of make the wood look a little bit cleaner. One of them's like one of them's a base, and one of them's an acid. Um, maybe this is the acid. Maybe that's the base. I can't remember. One cleans and one brightens. And then tomorrow, hopefully, we'll get at least one coat on the teak. And we don't take it all off. We just take we just take it down and clean it and then add some more of the uh, teak sealer to it. Mm -hmm. You can see here on the corner where the coats of the sealer has worn off. So we're just gonna clean that up and then put another coat on it. and It'll all blend together pretty well. Um, it's not perfect, but it's good enough for us. And it's super easy. There's almost no prep other than cleaning the teak. Um, you can see here over the summer, See all the black little pieces. Um, you see where it's peeling up and it gets dirty and it does get a little bit moldy. So we need to, or mildewy, I don't know, grow something green on it. So we gotta clean that up. It takes a long time to clean it. It takes like a day at least to clean it. Oh. Especially when this thing's in the way. Oh, here's a good spot. You can really see where it's come off. Right there.
So what are you using here? It's called Snappy Teak. New. So this is part one, and this is part two. It's pretty aggressive, and you, you're not supposed to get it on painted surfaces, metal, uh, fiberglass, gel coat. Like it's for teak only. And um, really? it says if you do, you know, like rinse it off immediately. So then yeah. like that wet, and then gotta do that. But you put the first one on and scrub it and let it turn kind of black. And then you put the second one, you don't rinse, and then you put the second one on and let it turn blonde, and then you rinse it. So you actually have to use a different uh, brush for each Yeah, you gotta use this one for the second one. And that one's for the first one. You said something about mixing them? You don't mix them? You don't mix them, but you don't rinse in between. Okay. Yeah. So one of them's probably some sort of caustic and the other one, this one's corrosive. And this one's probably caustic. Probably has, yeah, sodium hydroxide and this one's probably some sort of acid. Yeah, hydrochloric acid in this one. Great. Wow. That's just the, that's the uh, I teak mean, sealer? Coming off. Right. Yeah. It really pulls, it takes it all off. I mean, it. Snappy teak new, huh? Yeah. Huh? See what it looks like. See what it does to that bronze before we. Well, it's kind of turning it brown. You can tell it over there. Is it shining it or taking the patina off? Yeah. This is just years and years of teak sealer. It's just got embedded. Teak sealer over top of varnish and sea tall and. I don't know. I think we stripped this. I think we? you did. Yeah, I think I remember you did that. Taking it all off down the there's some. There's some stuff on here still. I don't know if it's like epoxy or something, but you can tell. There's a couple little pieces, like right there. That's something permanent. It could be wood glue or whatever they yeah, assemble exactly. the doors with. Yeah, exactly. Like something I'm not penetrable. Yeah. So we said we don't use varnish on our boat, and that's mostly just because our teak isn't really in good shape. So what we use instead is the Starbright Teak Sealer. And we, it comes in a few different colors. We just use the natural light color. Um, I actually think they have a clear color now. They didn't have that before. Um, and then they have like a teak color one, which is darker than what we have. They look like bleached teak. Yeah, clean, like not all caked with all the sealant and stuff. Yeah, they have to be sanded a little bit though. This looks real harsh. Yeah, we need different sandpaper. That 120 is way too much. We're just putting on the first coat of this uh, stuff we always use. Um, I ended up taking this the doors all the way down with some of that really caustic stuff. And now I'm just putting on this first coat. You can kind of see there's still some, this is really old, like varnish or sea tall or something that just, I can't sand it and it won't come off. And these doors are kind of fragile. So I don't want to get too aggressive with them. It's really soaked in, you can tell. Like this is really soaked in. So I, maybe I'll do another coat tomorrow. Yeah. 